Alrighty. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Carla Lopez, Program Supervisor for the Division of Epidemiology. I will be presenting an update on monkeypox this evening and then I will go through the English presentation first, followed by the Spanish one and at the end we will provide time for questions. Buenas tardes y gracias por acompañarnos esta tarde. Mi nombre es Carla López. Soy supervisora del área de epidemiología y esta tarde compartiré con ustedes información sobre la viruela del mono. Daré inicio con la presentación en inglés, seguido por la presentación en español y al final tendremos el tiempo para preguntas, uh, para responder a sus preguntas. Gracias. Next slide. So what is monkeypox? Monkeypox is a rare viral infection that is not commonly seen in the United States. The virus was first discovered in 19, uh, 1958 and the first human case was actually reported in 1970. And since then, the infection has been reported in certain endemic areas in Central and Western African countries. The spread and tr or transmission is through close personal contact. This person-to-person -person transmission can happen through direct contact with the infectious rash, scabs, or body fluids of an infected person. It can happen through respiratory secretions, uh, secretions during prolonged face-to-face -face contact or during intimate physical contact. Transmission can also take place when contact with items that were previously in contact with an infectious rash or body fluids, such as clothing, bedding or towels. And infected, uh, if infected, um, a person will experience flu-like symptoms such as headache, fever, muscle aches, swollen lymph nodes, and low energy, which can be followed by a rash that can look like pimples or blisters that appear in the face, inside the mouth, or other parts of the body. It's important to mention that the rash does go through different stages before healing, and these lesions often um, are often described as painful. A person is infectious from the time of onset of symptoms until rash is fully healed, meaning that scabs have fallen off and a flesh layer of skin has formed, and this process can take a couple of weeks. Monkeypox is a self-limited, mild infection and does not spread easily between people. And currently, the risk of getting the uh, infection uh, by monkeypox or the monkeypox infection is low. Next slide. So we can do uh, what we can do. Oh, are we okay? All right. How can we prevent um, getting the infection, um, the infection, or uh, prevent um, getting the illness with monkeypox? Uh, we can do. Carla, you hold on, you're on, you're on mute. Carla, can you unmute yourself? Okay. There you uh, go. Can you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> and where should I start? Where did you last hear me? Start with the second slide, Carla. Okay, second slide. Okay. Yep. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. So how can we prevent monkeypox? Uh, we can do this by avoiding close physical contact with people who have uh, symptoms, including coming into contact with the infectious rash. We should also avoid touching contaminated items, such as the clothing, bedding, or towels used by an infected person. In addition, uh, we should also avoid the surface that have been used by someone with monkeypox. We um, also recommend that you stay informed and you can do this by visiting our public health department website. Um, you could also visit the California Department of Public Health or Centers for Disease Control website where you could find additional information and updates on the current situation with monkeypox. 
I would also like to add that should you develop uh, any symptoms and you are concerned that this might be monkeypox, please contact your healthcare provider for an initial assessment over the phone. We do uh, recommend not to visit the clinic physically. Um, also other steps that you should take is isolate at home. You should cover up your rash and avoid coming to close, close contact with um, other individuals. We will now continue with the Spanish presentation. We encourage that during this time, you could enter any questions into the chat and they will uh, be addressed at the end. Ahora uh, daremos inicio con la presentación en español. Gracias por su espera. Next slide. Bueno, ¿qué es la viruela del mono? La viruela del mono es una infección viral inusual que es causada por el virus de la viruela del mono, que no es común en los Estados Unidos. El virus fue descubierto al, eh, en el año de 1958, uh, se tuvo el primer caso humano en 1970 y desde entonces se han reportado casos esporádicos y en ocasiones brotes en diferentes regiones endémicas como la región occidental y central de África. La transmisión de la viruela del mono se lleva a cabo a través del contacto cercano. La transmisión de persona a persona se considera, se considera a través de contacto directo con lesiones de la piel o secreciones de estas, así como contacto directo con fluidos corporales. A través de secreciones respiratorias durante contacto cercano cara a cara es otra forma de uh, poder uh, exponerse y adquirir la infección o durante contacto íntimo. La transmisión también puede ser a través de contacto indirecto con secreciones uh, de una lesión que han estado en contacto con la uh, ropa, la ropa de cama o toallas uh, contaminadas por estas lesiones. Cuando existe infección, los síntomas iniciales son aquellos parecidos a la de una gripa. Estos incluyen síntomas como fiebre, dolor de cabeza, dolor muscular e inflamación de los ganglios linfáticos. Estos síntomas son seguidos de lesiones en la piel que se asemejan a granos o ampollas que aparecen en la cara, dentro de la boca u otras partes del cuerpo. Estas lesiones han sido descritas como dolorosas y causan comezón cuando las costras um, han caído, se han caído. Es importante um, hacer mención que las, uh, que las lesiones de la piel pasan por diferentes etapas antes de, de sanar. Y una persona es considerada infecciosa desde el momento en que inician los síntomas hasta el momento en que sanen las lesiones de la piel. Esto es cuando se ha desprendido la costra y una capa nueva de piel se ha, se ha este, formado. Este proceso puede tardar varias semanas, de dos a cuatro semanas. La viruela del mono en general causa una infección leve, es autolimitada y no se transmite fácilmente entre personas. Actualmente, el riesgo de contraer la infección en Estados Unidos es baja. Siguiente, por favor. ¿Cómo se puede prevenir? Um, esto se puede llevar a cabo evitando contacto físico con personas que presentan síntomas, uh, incluyendo contacto directo con las lesiones en la piel. Evitar tocar artículos contaminados, así como superficies que han sido usadas por una persona infectada con la viruela del mono. Por último, recomendamos que se mantengan informados y lo pueden hacer visitando nuestra página uh, de internet del Departamento de Salud del Condado de Imperial, así como visitando la página del Departamento de Salud Estatal de California y de los Centros para Control y la Prevención de Enfermedades para más información y actualizaciones sobre el brote. Quisiera uh, agregar también que si usted llega a desarrollar síntomas, por favor de contactar por teléfono a su médico de cabecera para una valoración inicial. Se recomienda evitar ir a la clínica. También otras medidas que se pueden tomar es que pueden aislar, aislarse dentro de su hogar, cubrir las lesiones uh, de la piel y evitar contacto cercano con otras personas. Next slide. Okay, en este momento, eh, podemos ya tomar sus preguntas. At this time, we could take your questions. Rosa has her hand, hand up, Rosa Diaz. Go ahead, Rosa. Hi, Hi Carla. Hi, Rosa. Um, so is there any uh preventative measures measures that can be taken one of the conversations that we had here at the lgbt center is regarding uh, uh prep if that is something that could be made available or if that is something that is recommended 
Yes, so currently we have, um, so currently there's um, two FDA licensed uh, vaccines in the United States. Um, one of them, uh, and I forgot the name, I think it's, um, give me a quick second. Carla, you want me to take this one? Jane, oh, yes, Dr. Monday, go ahead. Yeah, hey, hi, hi everybody. It's uh, Dr. Steve Monday, the Imperial County Public Health Officer. Uh, First of all, thanks, Carla. Um, you're doing a great job and appreciate sharing the information. So with regard to prevention and treatment of monkeypox, um, the main way, of course, to prevent this is to limit exposure. And that gets back to what Carla was saying uh, in her slide, where avoiding uh, physical contact with either somebody who's infected or their environment. So for example, Let's just say if you happen to sleep in the same bed with somebody who had monkeypox, even if there wasn't physical contact between you, because they could potentially contaminate the bed linens, then the other person could get it from that. So it's, it's important to understand that it's not just the person, that it's possible that the environment itself can get contaminated. And so the, it's really about avoiding contact. It is possible that it can be spread from the respiratory tract, but it's very, very, very difficult. Unlike something like COVID or influenza, which is normally spread that way, this is not the way that monkeypox is spread. And so large droplets, if somebody happens to be infected and, uh, and they're shedding the virus, can spread it, but it takes close contact. They'd have to be within a few feet of the person and uh, for long periods of time. And for example, if you look at the current outbreak and you know now there's between 3,000 and 3,500 cases worldwide in this current um, epidemic, they have looked at things like people that have gotten onto planes and in other places where there would be a potential concern that perhaps if it were to get into the air, it could spread to others. And they have not seen that happen. So obviously still looking for it, but that doesn't seem to be a concern. With regard to what Carla was starting to mention, there are two vaccines. They're not actually designed specifically for monkeypox. They're actually smallpox vaccines. One of them is ACAM 2000, and that is a sort of a, mod a modern manufactured version of the old smallpox vaccine, the Drivax that we used to use. It actually contains that virus, but it's manufactured in a different way. The old way, basically, they just inoculated cattle and they collected the virus from that and they made the vaccine. The new one, they actually do it like they do um, typical modern vaccines where they do a, a, I'm going to use this word loosely, in a test tube where they use a specific type of a cell or whatever to develop the vaccine. It still is a live virus. Uh, and the way that it works is that you inoculate somebody's skin with it. That's the old version you've seen in the past where somebody gets the big bubble and that leaves a scar on their arm. This newer vaccine, this ACAM 2000 still um, does that. But again, the manufacturing is much better than it used to be. It's important to understand that this particular vaccine, because it is a live vaccine, does have some safety issues with it. Obviously, when smallpox was very widespread and people, of course, could die from smallpox, then you had to weigh the risks and the benefits. And so the risks of the vaccine were taken in light of the fact that there was a benefit of somebody not getting smallpox. But as an example, we didn't give it to children that were less than one. We didn't give it to kids that have eczema. Somebody who's immunocompromised, um, say for example, somebody who has HIV that's not well controlled, because it's a live virus and their immune system might not contain the vaccine, then they can actually get sick and in some cases can die from it. So it's important to understand that that vaccine's actually in, in an earlier form been around for a long time, but it does have some risks associated with it. There's also what's called vaccine immune globulin, or excuse me, vaccinia immune globulin. And that is basically immunoglobulins that were made against this particular virus that we would use in people who got that vaccine and had complications from it. And in theory, it uh, is something that we could potentially use in somebody who got monkeypox and who was um, you know, having a severe reaction to it. Maybe they were immunosuppressed and they got really sick from it. So that's one possibility. Um, the other is a newer vaccine um, that's only been out for um, a few years. Again, this one was designed against smallpox, but because monkeypox is a close cousin, 
uh, and um, there's a lot of overlap in terms of how the immune system and the medications work against it, then this vaccine uh, would likely work against monkeypox. And there are some, some test tube type experiments and some animal experiments that do suggest that it would work. This one is called Genios. The nice thing about Genios is that it's what's called a replication incompetent vaccine. And what that means is that although it does contain a version of the virus, that virus is not able to replicate itself in the human and therefore it can't cause uh, uh, disseminate an infection or make somebody sick. Um, so it causes the immune system to respond, but it doesn't cause those other side effects. However, because of the fact that it works a little differently than that other one, it's actually given as two doses instead of one. And those doses are given at least four weeks apart. And it's given sub Q, which means it's just injected into the skin, similar to many of the other vaccines that you guys are already um, familiar with. With regard to specifically how you might potentially use it for either PrEP, which is pre-exposure prophylaxis, or PEP, which is post-exposure prophylaxis, the problem that we have is that there's a very limited amount of the vaccine available. Um, the last that I um, got an update, um, which was just last week, there were less than 40,000 doses of this vaccine all across the entire country. And keeping in mind that any given individual who was going to be vaccinated would have to get two doses, that means there's only 20,000 courses to use everywhere. So in terms of the pre-exposure prophylaxis, there's not enough um, to use sort of in the general public, including in populations that have been identified to, to be high risk. Um, they are using it uh, in areas um, where people are sort of working on this. So for example, people who might be um, either collecting these specimens or running them in the lab because of the risk that they could potentially get infected. That's a group that's recommended for. People that are going to be doing experiments in um, labs working with monkeypox, trying to develop maybe new treatments or whatever, people um, like that. So those are the ones that are targeted. And then there might be some clinical scenarios uh, perhaps if there were workers who were going to go out to evaluate these patients that might have uh, monkeypox, uh, collect specimens from them, they would be at high risk. Uh, and again, that would be a relatively small group. And so with the limited amount of vaccine that's currently available, um, that would be the group that would be targeted. Um, we um, have to get the vaccine through the normal sort of public health uh, mechanism. CDC actually um, has the vaccine. They've released a certain amount of it to the states. So in our state, we have the California Department of Public Health. They would then release it to the local health departments as we see the need. And we have already reached out to them and procured um, a small supply of the vaccine so that if we have our first case and we have not had one yet, then we are prepared to give it as post-exposure prophylaxis uh, Alexis to anybody who would be considered to be a close um, contact. If there is a, um, a manufacturing change and the vaccine becomes a lot more um, available, then we uh, would potentially expand who that uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis would become available for. The ACAM 2000, there are more doses available Again, that supply is managed through the CDC, but as I noted, because that is a vaccine that has considerable um, concern about side effects, um, then at this time, it's not, there's not a plan to generally use that um, in uh, large populations. At some point, they may uh, make different recommendations, but that is not the current uh, recommendation. So. Um, hopefully that answered your question. Uh, it has to do right now basically with the amount of those um, vaccines that are available and uh, how widespread the populations are that we would want to um, potentially give them to. So uh, as a follow-up question, if somebody does believe that they, they were infected uh, do they go primarily to their doctor? Uh, and if that happens, will their provider have access to, to PrEP or PEP? 
Yes, so um, should um, someone suspect that they have the infection, um, again, they should consult uh, with their medical provider um, as for an initial assessment. Um, we are in contact and working closely with our um, providers uh, here in the county. Um, they're being uh, informed of daily, well, not daily, but they're being informed of updates uh, for monkeypox and um, they, um, are uh, asked to reach out to us um, should they have a suspect case. Um, there are some pro procedures that need to be followed up for um, uh, confirmation of a, of a case. Yeah, just, just to um, reiterate what Carla just said, um, we have a process in place that we have uh, already developed. We're already in contact with our public health uh, partners. As I said, we've already reached out um, to the state to make sure that we do have a supply if we were to have a case. Um, Carla and her team at the health department have broadly shared information to the providers in the county. We've also shared them in the community. Obviously, we're trying to do forums like this as well to make sure that that gets uh, shared even uh, more. And so the person would go to their normal uh, health care that they would use for any other reason. Obviously, uh, if it's after hours or whatever, if they needed to go to the emergency department or whatever, but the bottom line is they would seek care. Uh, and then that provider would reach out to us um, if they had a concern so that we could guide them, make a determination as to whether or not we think this could potentially be monkeypox, give guidance about whether or not specimens should uh, be collected. Uh, and then, of course, get the specimens and then forward them on so that they can go through the public health lab system and get the testing done. Uh, and then, as we noted, because we have kept some genios uh, in the local area, we would be prepared to determine if there are people um, who would potentially have been contacts of this person uh, if we do think they have monkeypox so that if we file it were necessary we could administer it so yes we we have been working about the working on this and thinking about it i had, have already been communicating broadly to people about uh, what the process would be if there was a concern about monkeypox carla we do have some questions that came in from uh, the media uh, from lavos uh first number one is um in Imperial County, have there been any confirmed cases of monkeypox? Uh, and the follow-up question is, have there been any cases detected in California? Okay, so I'll answer um, in English and then I'll continue in Spanish. Okay. Uh, um, so currently there have been no cases confirmed in the County of Imperial. Um, in regards to the state, we have a total of 39 cases as reported as of yesterday. Actualmente no tenemos ningún caso confirmado en el condado de Imperial y para el estado de California tenemos un total de 39 casos. And then there's another follow-up question to that is, uh, does the border have any uh, influence in the spread of the disease? I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? Does the border have any like influence in the spread of the disease? In the spread? Um, well, I mean, we do have... Um, a highly um, mobile um, border. So we do have a lot of um, individuals who come across the border either from here to Mexico or, or to Mexico to here to the United States for um, various um, reasons. And so, um, I mean, there is obviously, um, if you do come into a contact, you know, with the confirmed case, um, of course, that obviously is a risk and um, of exposure and the risk of getting infected. Okay. And then uh, in the chat, we have, does the county have access to T-Pox as well? T-P-O-X-X. -X. Yeah. So T-Pox um, is the... Um, look at it as sort of an antibiotic or an antiviral medication. Um, it is actually uh, an investigational use for uh, monkeypox. And so it's very limited access um, and it's very difficult to administer because of the requirements. Um, I literally is just, have just been in a call earlier today uh, where we have had some more discussion about this. Um, there's a few um, places in California that are um, 
making themselves available um, to administer it. Um, a couple of the academic institutions, um, I know that they are uh, in discussions with uh, one uh, here uh, in Southern California as well. Um, since I don't know what the outcome of that discussion will be, I don't want to say anything further because it might turn out that uh, it, it won't work and they may move uh, to um, to a different uh, provider. But uh, yes, there is work that's going on uh, about how to get Tecoverimet, which is the, um, the generic name mm -hmm. uh, for that drug, uh, uh, available so that if we need to use it. Um, keep in mind that so far in this particular epidemic, and again, there have been roughly 3,500 cases reported um, worldwide. No deaths have been reported, uh, and the vast majority of the cases have been mild, and they have actually only chosen to give uh, treatment to a very small number of people. So the bottom line is, is that um, the, the risk is actually low. The likelihood that we would have to use it is low, um, but we do need to be prepared in case there are um, a, a small number of people that do need it. And that work is currently taking place. Thank you. Uh, what are the risks in swimming pools? Um, I would say that there's no risk in a swimming yeah. pool. I mean, again, as I noted, uh, you know, you really need close uh, physical contact either with the person or their environment. Uh, and the, uh, the swimming pool with the chlorine and the other stuff in it, I mean, you know, other than people sitting, you know, on the edge together outside of the pool, uh, especially if they have physical contact with each other. But if you're talking about the pool itself, I would not expect that that would be an issue. Okay, those are the chat. Those are the questions that we have on, on the Zoom chat. Uh, do you have anything on social media, Eddie? Yeah, um, we have to, a question from Maria Lorena. Um, it's your, the question is in Spanish. Alguna vacuna que nos recomienden para protección? Como protección. I believe the question was addressed by Dr. Monday, but if you can mention something in Spanish, Carla, that would be great. Sí, um, sí, claro. Eh, el doctor, el oficial de salud, eh, Dr. Steven Monday, eh, mencionó anteriormente que sí hay vacunas um, disponibles um, en Estados Unidos, pero esas vacunas por el momento uh, nada más son para aquellas personas que son contactos uh, cercanos de un caso confirmado. Esto es debido al límite de la cantidad de vacunas que hay y um, de las dos vacunas que él mencionó, eh, probablemente um, Posteriormente, tal vez en nuestra página web vamos a poner más detalles, pero um, es una de ellas que es la, la, la más, uh, más nueva uh, que se um, autorizó en 2019. Es la que probablemente uh, se vaya a hacer uso, mayor uso de ya debido a que es más segura y menos uh, complicaciones con ella. Eh, pero sí, sí hay, pero esta está disponible no para el público en general, simplemente para aquellas personas que son contactos cercanos a un caso uh, confirmado. Thank you. And then the other question that we have from Fernie Ramos is, how long does this virus live in or on surfaces? I'll defer that to Dr. Mundy. So, I haven't seen anything that uh, specifically address that issue, um, but I would note that as an example, if you, uh, let's just say you were in a household that was somebody who had monkeypox um, and you're, you know, you're sleeping in separate rooms, but if you take their laundry uh, and you were to shake their laundry out and expose yourself, then that has been uh, on occasion shown to transmit monkeypox. And that can occur a number of days um, afterward. So I don't know that we have a specific answer. It may be out there. I just, uh, I haven't seen anything. Uh, I'll take a look and see if I can find something. But I think in general, the answer to the question is that um, it definitely can live um, on surfaces or in things like bedding. Uh, for a number of days. And so you would want to make sure that uh, with regard to surfaces that you um, that you clean them um, or with regard to things like laundry that you wash them with detergent and then hot water, um, et cetera, et cetera. And it specifically recommends as an example, if, let's say you're doing laundry for somebody that is recovering from this, that you wouldn't want to, for example, shake out the sheets um, because that would potentially um, aerosolize some of the material, which might lead to transmission. 
And just to add on to that, uh, Dr. Monday, I believe it's also recommended for uh, them to wear gloves or use some protective equipment. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you would use the sort of the normal kind of con what we call contact precautions, precautions, which is that you wouldn't want to have contact with anything without protection. So that would be gloves. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you want to you know have your arms and whatever covered as well. If there's any chance that they might come in contact, it would absolutely uh, wearing gloves and hand washing would be super important. And then we have one last question. Uh, would there be a higher risk at the city splash pads? Well, again, like uh, Dr. Mention, mentioned previously, um, if there is a skin to skin contact, that would be the, the exposure risk in those areas. Okay, those are all the questions. Yeah, I, I don't th I think the, the risk would be just about people if they potentially had close physical contact with each mm -hmm. other not so much with regard to the water itself, because of course they have to, to follow the sort of similar things that we do for swimming pools. They have to chlorinate the water and all of that sort of stuff. So it would be more of a, any opportunity of physical contact, which doesn't necessarily have anything to do with a swimming pool or a water sport. Thank you. Uh, those are all the questions we, we have, Carla. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Gracias a todos por estar, uh, por acompañarnos esta tarde. Um, if you have more uh, questions, please visit our webpage, and I believe that would be shared with you in the chat, um, where we will be updating um, information on monkeypox and answering any questions that you enter on the website. Um, de nuevo, gracias. Si tienen preguntas adicionales, por favor, de visitar nuestra página um, en internet, y este, van a compartir ahorita el link dentro del chat para que ustedes puedan tener acceso a más información y actualizaciones sobre la viruela del mono y contestar cualquier pregunta adicional que usted puede tener. Muchas gracias.